the opening song, Animate, I think is one of our all-time best. I love the drive of it, I love the arrangement of it, but I was starting to get conflicted about my own drumming at that point. I'd been working so much with sequencers and with click tracks for so many years, and I had developed really good precision of time. But I felt a stiffness because of that metronomic need, but I didn't have the looseness that I wanted to hear out of my own playing. After so many years of being an amazing player, Neil could have clearly just decided not to play drums until it was time to go play a Rush show. But instead, he cared enough about what he did to try and break down his current technique and work with Freddie Gruber and sort of reinvent his playing style. I was in New York doing a Buddy Rich tribute recording. Over that recording session in New York, I met Freddie and had dinner and, and uh, got curious, what would it be like to study with a guy like that? And I had the time, so I thought, yes, I'm gonna try this. It's not to make it sound easy, because when I studied with Freddie, I asked myself, can I really do this? Will I have the discipline? It's a huge commitment. Can you tell me about when you met Neil and what your first impressions of him were? He was easy, you know, because he wasn't nuts. <laughs> And I was, you know, and it was like, you know, it was fun. It didn't have to go to some strange land. We never played the drums. We talked about motion and uh, told a lot of stories and did some dancing. We were behind a set of drums <clears throat> because the approach to what you do results in what you get. You understand? Freddie is all about the motion, and it was all about the motion of the hands and feet that contributed to a dance. And one of the first things he did was stand up and do a little soft shoe dance for me. And saying, when you're doing that, is that dance happening on the floor? No, it's happening in the air. So these were revelations to me to start thinking about not just the hit, but the motions between. Time is linear. It's, uh, it's not, uh, it's like a pogo stick, you know. A lot of pop music is played like that. It's extremely vertical. It's like people slapping water when they swim. Mm, yeah. It doesn't... Inefficient motion. Breathe. Let's a... put it this way. You can have a beautiful body and look marvelous. Thank you. But, <laughs> but if you're not breathing, <clears throat> it's not alive. <laughs> you know? So you got to at least put the breath in there, huh? I can play a simple beat now completely different from how I would have played that simple beat 15 years ago. <laughs> not that. <laughs> there you go. It takes a lot of courage, being a drummer of the stature that Neil Peart is, to be able to say, I can improve. And when he came back out and he made his appearances after working with Freddie and he turned his grip around, tr traditional grip, and had a different approach, he was so much more relaxed. That was the most refreshing thing you could have seen, is that your hero could also still learn that they weren't just done. And I worked with my bandmates right after that on the Test for Echo songs. And the other guys would say, well, it still sounds like you. And at first I was kind of disappointed. But then I thought, well, of course it does. They thought it sounded the same. But the, when they went to play with me, there was a different clock at work now. Driven day and night in circles. 